Okay, let's finish this up. Uh, let's do type 2 and type 3. Um, okay, let's look at the tables. Uh, they're, they're different. Um, okay, so uh, type 2. Let's look at the table. Um, the first couple, the first uh, row uh, columns are pretty much the same, but um, then we have these uh, start date, end date, and current columns. And what this does is it allows us to have um, allows us to save uh, historical rows. So if there's a change to the data here, we can keep the, we can keep the old row and create a brand new row. And the new row will get marked as current. And the old rows will have a start date and an end date showing um, when they were good. What, what, you know, like if this product uh, changes, we'll know when that particular row was used between what date and what date. And we'll programmatically be able to see which one is the current one because only the current one will have a true, which is a one. This is a bit field. Um, and of course, we're, other than that, it's, it's pretty much the same. So we're going to want to insert um, existing rows into a new row, and then we'll take the old row and um, and mark it as not being current and give it uh, the appropriate start date end date. So let's see how we're going to do that. It is a little complicated. Um, so first of all, we want to connect to our uh, our product table, our staging table, the, the data coming in from production. Uh, and we want to do the lookup. So th this is pretty much the same. We just uh, connect to the data and we do a lookup to see if the data is in our, um, and caching would probably be better. Um, and we want to do, well, I've already talked about the caching uh, in the previous video. So we, again, we just want to check to see if we if, if it's there or not. Now, if, if it's not there, then that means it's a new product. And this right here is, is just an annotation. Um, and so what we want to do is we just want to add the new columns. So we need a, a derived column here where we're going to insert those uh, modification dates, which, and um, so this would be a brand new product. So it's just going to take on the modification date from the, uh, from the incoming data. So we have an incoming uh, column which has the modification date coming from production and we're just going to mark that as the beginning and end date for for that and that this is the current product so that one gets the true for current because this is a brand new row because this means it it was not already in the column so this is only for inserts so that means everything here is where we got a match on the product id so that means these this is how we're going to have to handle um, existing uh, data so this is our current and changed products. So it might, you know, that it might just be that this is a column that hasn't changed. I mean, a, a row that hasn't changed. It's it's already there, but it hasn't changed. So what we have to do is we have to look and see it has it been changed. So this right here is just a plate is just a um, annotation, and uh, this is where we need to do a lookup. So we're going to look up um, our in the data warehouse, and we're going to look to see, of course, we're going to make sure that we match up the product ID so that we're, of course, looking at the same at apples to apples. And we're going to see, is the modified date, has that changed? Because that's being maintained. So if that modified date is, is different from what we have already, then we know that that row has changed. So if, if that hasn't changed, if the modification date hasn't changed, and that means that it's an existing row that we've already loaded and no data has changed, so we want to do nothing. So if it if it is different, and uh, remember we've got to do the redirect uh, on no match. That's not the default setting, so that's very important. Um, so here I've got again a placeholder. Just just say that the product's changed versus you know product is current. So here's our product changed. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is we'll do an update um, on the on the row, and we do that by connecting to the data warehouse, and we have our update statement. So of course this is a SQL command, 
not a SQL command, but a, an OADB command where we're running a SQL statement. And uh, we're doing an update, and we're going to set that end date, and we're going to set the current to zero. So that one is an easy one to do because this is the old row again. And, um, and this is where the production ID equals the incoming data and is current is one. So we're going to take that is current row and make it not the current row. So this is how we're going to handle taking the what was our current row and making it a historical row. So because we're going to set the end date to the incoming date. So that happens here. So we've got the product idea ID and we've got that modification date. So you see, if we come in here, we've got that product ID and that, um, yeah, that's product ID here and that end date. Now that handle, that makes the current, the row that was current makes that historical. Now we need to add a start date and an end date flag to the row. So here's the modification date. So it's the start date is the incoming date. And we're just going to leave the end date um, null. So we don't have a row for that because null mean, a null end date means that's the, is what we have for the current row because we don't know when it's going to end. And we have to set the is current to true. So th that's how we um, make the incoming row the current row. So this handles the old row becoming a historical row. This handles the uh, incoming row becoming the current row. And now we need to do an insert for that incoming um, current row. So this is just a straight data connection uh, where we connect to the data warehouse. We connect to that type two table and we have to map all our data. Pretty straightforward. Let me get all the way down here so we can see. Yeah, um, I, I added all the data. Some of this could could definitely be removed for production purposes. You know, we probably reduce some overhead if we reduce these columns. So we've got um, this is our um, derived column. We derive these these columns, and that's where we're gonna. Um, stick the start date and the end date and notice we're not sticking anything in the end date because for the current row we want that to be null. Okay, so that's type 2 and now let's look at type 3. So we'll go to the type 3 table. It's really um, its own little ball of wax. It's not uh, type 0 and type 1 are very similar, but type 2 and type 3, not so much. Um, so for type 3, what you're doing is you're, you're not adding any rows like you are for type 2. You're not adding historical rows. What you are doing is you're adding historical columns. So what we're get, we have is we have a historical column for the standard cost and a historical column for the list price. And what these are going to do is always store the previous, and this depends on your business rule. In this case, I'm assuming that we want to store the previous value, but you might, in your in your case, you might want to do like last weeks or last months or last years, um, something like that. But in this case, it's whatever the previous value is that gets in here. And since these are all new values, there is no previous value because this is just a load. This was just a straight load. So these haven't been modified yet. We'll modify the data and, and, I'll, and, and make sure everything works um, once we get through explaining uh, the code here. So these two columns will get historical data. None of the other columns will get historical data. So that's another thing too about type three is that you have to select which columns you want to have historical. You could have a column for each of them or you could have a column for one of them or somewhere in between. Um, we're still gonna of course use the inactive to inactivate products, and we're going to use that um, trigger maintained modification date to see if something has changed. Okay, so let's go into the flow. Um, and this is these haven't changed. Uh, the new product it just gets inserted. 
Um, that's straightforward. And again, this is just a placeholder to say uh, for current and changed products. So we want to look up that date and see if the date has changed. And if the date has not changed, then that means we already have the current data and nothing changed. So we're going to do nothing. And that's just a placeholder. So for th this is where um, the, it's not a new row. It's an existing row. And that, that modification date has changed. So here we have to handle that. And this is just a placeholder to saying, you know, what this column of, of code is. And here we want to add the history columns by looking them up. And so here we're going to connect to the data warehouse. And so here um, we're going to uh, look up that product and we're going to add in the uh, standard cost and the list price. So this is a way of bringing in the old list cost and the old uh, list price um, into the data flow. So we're gonna, so we're actually doing, you know, a, a standard lookup here, and we're not doing it, you know, to see if it's already there or anything. Here we're actually adding this data to the data flow. Okay, so now that we've got that, we can do our update. And again, we just want to connect to the data warehouse, and here we have the meat of it. So we're doing an update. So this is how we we make uh, we, we move the uh, historical data over. We take that last list price and that last standard cost and add them into those um, slowly changing dimension fields. And we put the new flow for the list price and cost here. And we of course have to match everything up based on the production ID. And then we do our column mappings. So you can see we have the product ID has to be in the where clause. So that has to come down to the where clause. Remember, these are in the order of the question marks. So the standard cost, the list price goes into the, or the new, is, is the new data. And we, we don't load this data because this data does not change. This is not part of the slowly changing dimension. And then we, this, we loaded this into the data flow. So now we can load those into the appropriate columns, the historical columns. And uh, that's all there is to it. OK, so now let's actually look to see that it works. So what we'll do is we will um, go to our product table. And let's do an edit. So what we'll do is we'll take a product. Let's just take 410. And let's just change like nickel silver to uh, matte black. And we'll change the list price from 5 to 9.99. And we'll change its standard cost to 1.06. OK. Now we've made those changes to the data, and we'll re-execute this query, and we'll see that that trigger changed the, um, the modification date. So now our code will be able to pick up on that. So let's run this. And let's go back to here and let's run the whole package. Okay, so everything, we got green check marks on everything, so everything worked. All right, now let's come in here and let's look at type zero. Now type zero should have rejected everything. So you can see this was, this was for 410. And you can see the this didn't change, this didn't change, and so nothing changed. So this did exactly what it was supposed to do. It uh, rejected the changes. So let's look at type one, and that's the row, this row here. And you can see here it, it took our changes for that, and you can see the uh, modification date changed. Uh, let's look at type two. So here we have, there's 410 again. So you can see now with type two, 
we have the start date and the end date. So you can see this is the old row, and you can see the old row has uh, um, hasn't 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 doesn't have any of the changes. It, but this we have this new row, and this new row is where the changes are. So we've got a null for the end date. Oh yeah, and you can see the old row has been changed um, to is current is a zero. So this is no longer the current row, and you can see that the um, the end date has been changed. And so you can see, and here's the new values, and you can see that the values were not put in here. So the new row has its correct um, record keeping here and has the correct values here. Okay, and let's go to type three, and we'll look at the data here. And here you can see that we didn't add a new row. What we did was we added the original values to the historical column, and we add, and we put the new values in the data rows. So you can see it all works. Uh, everything is fine. That's how you do type zero through to type three. Um, any questions? Leave them below. Thank you very much for watching.